super subscribers and friends and like is great coming at you from the Chandler Museum. Hopefully that comes out right on the phone later on. Probably not. Hell if I know I'm on my cheap phone that I've had since Hawaii. Yeah, my last video cut off because this phone ran out of memory. It doesn't have very much memory. This is one of those cool places that you can hang out at night. It's rare to find a place like this that has a power outlet, Wi-Fi, free, and overhang, if it was raining. And these cool lights. Disco. <laughs> um, this is a public building, like a city building. So you can go to a city hall, courthouse, or a museum like this. And you run the chance of having a nighttime cleaner come in at night, which this one does have a guy that comes and shows up between 10 and 10.30 and then works for about an hour in there, cleaning it up and leaves. He doesn't care that I'm here. Or other than that, powering my phone on the thing or the Wi-Fi. does obviously care if I'm sleeping here overnight or anything like that. But at the same time, I just wanted to point out the fact that there's no fence and no gate or nothing like that, so this is considered public property, this section of it. Now, if I were to go behind, I don't know if you can even see it on the phone. This phone is cheap. But if I were to go to behind right there, that is what they call a fence and a gate. If you were to jump that fence or anything like that, you'd be automatically trespassing someplace. But here, for instance, being that this is a public open parking lot, comes up to here, all open. This is perfectly legal to be at as long as the property people don't care that you're here or the people who manage the place don't care. And I ran into the guy, the museum director, two nights ago, and he even said he doesn't care that I'm powering my phone here or that I'm using the free Wi-Fi. Between now and when the cleaner is here, it's only about three hours a night from about seven o'clock at night to ten or so is where I hang out here-ish. For a little bit, just for that reason, to borrow my phone and the Wi-Fi. I was just bringing it up to you because I came up and this is one of those rare places that you take advantage of when the people don't care that you're around. But majority of time I spend a night or two someplace and I move on. And I've been moving around Phoenix a little bit here and there. But the wanderlust gets to me after like a while. I don't know, I've been here like 10, 15 days so far. And the wanderlust is getting to me again. I may have to go north to Glendale or out west to Buckeye past the downtown Phoenix area and start going out to hitchhike out west toward like Quartzsite and I was thinking about going north to from Quartzsite about an hour north is uh, Parker Arizona which has a small town that has a Walmart and stuff in it then a little bit further north than that is Lake Havasu it's a nice lake up in the up a higher in elevation so it'll be cooler up there but it'll be colder at night and then it in that highway ends at at Bullhead City, Arizona, and the Laughlin, Nevada border. And so that, then I'd be on Interstate 40, and I'd be coming back this way to Flagstaff, and then back south to Phoenix, and kind of stay in that area. Maybe keep my wanderlust at bay doing that, or I might sneak over to California on Highway 20, or Interstate 20, go past Quartzsite further west. Not all the way to L.A., but probably up to Choca, Co Co Coachella. Coachella, Florida, or Coachella, California, what do they call it? I might go check that town out for a little bit, maybe depending just because of the whole roaming thing. I just wanted to make a quick video. Other people have asked me how I work out here, and basically you sign up at People Ready or one of the day labor type of jobs, and they send you out, but without a vehicle or a bike, and basically they just have public transit, or you can take a ride with another co worker if they're, they're assign you with someone else in a two person team, which is how they usually send you out. So you can go that route through Paper Ready, or what I do a lot of times is go to the Home Depot or the Lowe's Home Improvement, anywhere that's got general contractors that come through, and you stand there with a sign about wanting to get work. And then a contractor will pick you up and pay you under the table, and, and most of the time it's you make more than you would at Paper Ready. Paper Ready, you make like between 70 to 100 bucks, give or take, but then they take taxes out. With a contractor, if you get an eight hour day, you can usually make 80 to 100 bucks if they tip you a little bit more than that. And depending on what they do, sometimes the job isn't that hard or is or whatever. And the point is, you, you work one day a week, then you have a budget of, let's say, 100 bucks for the week. If you keep your budget to 10 bucks a day, 
there's seven days in a week, so that's 70 bucks. And then you, know, you can go over it a little bit here or there, but you keep that for food. Then if you had to, you know, get new clothes or something, you work another day. And that allows you to buy clothes and whatnot. But with this life, it's pretty cheap, easy life when all you really have to do is your basic stuff of food and clothes. You know, you keep everything else down to a minimum of what you need. I could get a cell phone, active cell phone service if I want to, but that's like anywhere between 35 and 50 or 60 bucks a month, depending on what phone service you use. I found, I don't have the phone right now, but I found a different carrier through Visible Phone, which you could buy a $20 phone online, have it sent to you somewhere, which right now I have a problem with the address having it sent to me. My mail is going to my mom's house up in Nebraska, so I don't want to switch everything around on mail wise to get something here but I did find a visible phone service it's called that $20 phone and then 40 bucks a month it supposedly is unlimited Wi-Fi or unlimited data plan which I don't know if that's the case or not it didn't used to be but then a guy that I saw on YouTube and is according to him going off of his video another RV or you could get that phone service and it's only 40 bucks a month you know so for a $20 phone and then 40 bucks a month it's cheaper than what I'm paying now on phone service if I, if I go with the full service from Straight Talk that I have now on the Straight Talk phone, the phone itself was 60 bucks to buy it, and then the service for it on the higher end of it is 55 or 60 bucks a month if I want to get phone service on it. Those are the bill, the only real recurring bill that I have out here being homeless. Um, outside of that, Every now and then you can fly a sign for food here on this corner or that corner, you know, I, that whole deal is kind of a lottery depending on where you're at. You can make decent money, probably even better money than you would standing out there holding up, you know, flagging for construction or whatever. But then at other times you could stand there all day long and make five bucks. So whenever I do hold a sign just for myself, I usually only do it for food. You know, if you stop into some place and you're on an interstate exit and there's no day labor in that place and you happen to be down on your money at the time, I lower my pride and consider, you know, even if you know someone else could help help me out on the road, over the road, you go stand on the intersection and fly a sign if you have to. It's not the best thing in the world to do, and I try to, to go about going my way working before I would do that, but at the same time, if it's the choices are starve or go fly a sign, then... When you, especially when you get out there in the middle of nowhere, someone will buy your meal here or there. So I'm not, I don't get too worried about it. The other thing is back there in that grocery sack, I bought, just like today, bought tuna and bread. And bread itself is between 88 cents and like a dollar twenty for the loaf of bread. And then tuna is anywhere between a dollar and a quarter to two fifty a pack, depending on how big the package is, for three or four sandwiches each pack something worth of tuna and the tuna you just put on the bread to flavor the bread mostly and then it you can get nutrients out of it some protein and some sodium out of it but mostly it's to flavor the flavor the bread and then you use the bread as a stomach stuffer to get by obviously i wouldn't want to do that every single day but that's one of those ways that you could stay relatively cheap for like three bucks i could eat twice in the day if i ration it so there are things out here that you'd have to do to survive there's cans of beans that you can buy from Walmart for like a buck for like the whole can and it has a can opener deal on top you just pop it off and there you go you can eat them cold you can cook them whatever there's pre-cooked hot dogs pre-cooked bacon both of those you can you can eat it right out of the package if it says it's pre-cooked and it's not going to harm you just pay attention to, to it saying pre-cooked on it uh you can get I forget what the brand name of it is, but that combination of peanut butter and jelly together, that's the best way to do a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It only costs like three bucks for the can, plus your bread. You know, basically I just look to Walmart for cheap, easy to make fast food, and then, you know, especially if you do the tuna out of the can or the tuna out of the packages and stuff like that, you can keep it and still have it be fresh even on hot days or cold days or whatever, and that's a good standby to have in your backpack. That doesn't weigh much that you'll have some kind of food and water on you so when you go hitchhiking and you end up in the middle of no, you know nowhere at least you'll have food on you and that by itself keeps me from having to go out there and fly a sign here or there or do this or that but if i have to i'll go out there and do that 
but mostly I get by doing the day labor, doing the contractor jobs. You can look up on Craigslist, and kind of feel them out, you know, and meet in a public place and stuff like that, so you don't end up with a weirdo on Craigslist. But there are a lot of gigs and jobs and stuff in the sections on Craigslist, especially when you're in a bigger city like Phoenix. You can post on there, or you can just reply to the posts that are already on there, and you can kind of tell the ones that are legit versus the one that wants you to go do massages or some sleazy kind of stuff. And you can find work that way through Craigslist. That's about 50-50 on whether it's a wacky kind of deal or not. Then you just meet in a public place and make sure they look like a normal contractor before you go off to work with them or wherever. And yeah, on that deal, you kind of have to trust the person because up front, you know, they can make you work all day long and then not pay you. In which case, the only other option there is to sue them civilly because if you got the cops involved, that's what the cops are going to tell you. You're going to have to sue them civilly for your time since you volunteered your time up front with the expectation of getting paid and then didn't get paid. So you have to watch that for Craigslist.